My name is Elizabeth Dye, and I design under my own name, and my design studio and office are located in the Film Exchange building in Northwest Portland. For the exhibition, I'm designing a gown using couture techniques, which um, involves building a gown on um, a bodice, a boned bodice, um, with a lot of interior structure, and then layering the fabrics on top to produce the finished garment. And I'm a bridal gown dressmaker in my regular design life, uh, but I often um, am limited by time and just the exigencies of my job from using couture techniques, and so this is an amazing opportunity for me to slow down and do things the way the couturiers do, which is a lot of hand sewing and a lot of step-by-step -step structural underlay before the dress comes to life. There was a woman who uh, operated a, an atelier in Athens, Greece, between the 60s and the 80s. She primarily did bridal gowns, but she had a lot of amazing fabrics, and she's retired now, and her daughter is auctioning off all her fabrics, and so I found this fabric and fell in love. It's probably from the 1980s, and when I first learned about this project, I thought this is absolutely what I wanted to use for this. And I'm really hoping there's a lot of layering and transparency so that the shifting fabrics moving against each other create a changing tint to sort of reflect the iridescence of the lace. I think if you live and work as a designer, you need to be inspired all the time. So for me, inspiration is a matter of um, being observant and being curious and a lot of reading, a lot of looking at things, and getting outside of your comfort zone as well. For example, I typically design bridal gowns, but I don't get inspired for bridal gowns by looking at other bridal gowns. I love looking at fine art. I'm very inspired by fabric. In this case, fabric was absolutely the inspiration. And um, I think, you know, as a designer, I never run out of ideas. I never am sort of scratching the bottom of the barrel. I'm filing things all the time. I typically start out by sketching, but I'm not a fashion illustrator, so I don't sit with my colored pencils and, and lavish a ton of attention on a drawing. I usually just draw enough to give me a roadmap to produce. And the primary design process, I think, happens on the form. I do all of my patterns by draping, so it's a three-dimensional design process where you're, you're putting fabric on a body and manipulating it um, from two dimensions to three dimensions. And what I like about that as well is sometimes when I'm in the middle of the process of draping, I don't, my original idea is less good than the thing that sort of spontaneously happens while I'm draping. And it's another reason why I don't want my drawing to be a finished thing. I'm not sort of having a burst of a complete idea and then executing it. I'm launching myself, getting to the form, and um, moving in a direction, but letting myself be surprised. What I love about making dresses is that you're always working within certain constraints to, within certain variations, the human body is always the same. And so you're really kind of revisiting the same idea over and over and over again, but refining it and perfecting it and varying it. So I feel like I could spend the rest of my life just revisiting sort of very classic principles and just trying to get better and better and better at them all the time.